Hey, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin Cash. I do want to say that I'm not a financial advisor. You should do your own research before investing money into crypto. If you haven't seen the previous update, make sure to watch that before watching this one so that you have more context. It's going to be linked in the top right hand corner of the video. Also, there are two donation links down below in the description. If you want to support Ukraine, feel free to do so by going over to the official websites and donating to the funds directly. The money does not go through me in any sort of way. I want to thank you all for supporting my country and for supporting my channel as well. And let's get on with the video. So I want to zoom out and show you the fib retracement that I have on. So I've had this for quite a while, actually. Our major capitulation target here is at $91. And this, my friends, is exactly what um, we could, you know, test before eventually going up into the bull market. So I've just highlighted the swing high and the swing low. And our target is here at $91. If we see a capitulation in September or in October, this would be a great level to buy into Bitcoin Cash. Golden entry opportunity, in my opinion. So if I just zoom in a little bit more here, you can see that we're breaking out of the symmetrical triangle that we were in. If I take a trend line to set the target, as you can see, the target is going to be all the way down here at $73. Now, I don't think we're going to necessarily get there, okay? I do think that we're going to hold this $90 level. Obviously, lots of things can change. Lots of things can happen. If Bitcoin starts dropping below uh, $15,000, $16,000, $17,000, then at that point, I would think that we will lose this low that we printed in July for Bitcoin Cash. And to be honest with you, it would be quite negative because after a strong capitulation, you really want to hold this key support level. If you don't, then you're going to have more targets to the downside. And we're going to take a look at those targets on the Binance's website. But for now, you have your two targets. Uh, like I said, $91 is what I expect to hold in case we start losing this low, right? So that is the second FIB level here. We got rejected from the $133 resistance trend line that we had here. And this is a nice double top pattern here. As you can see, you have your top here and you have your second top here. Uh, rejections from the exact same level. If you want to see what kind of um, a target we're going to have to the downside, and all we have to do is this and place it over there. So the target from this double top pattern is going to be at $95, which is essentially, which is essentially this, um, this swing low here. As you can see, that is exactly the target that we have for, uh, for uh, this pattern. Now, this is a bearish pattern, and this is potentially going to be a bearish continuation pattern because you create this pattern and you continue the downtrend. And on the large scheme of things, you have been in a downtrend, as you can see. So this is just another one of the patterns that you get uh, that end up in us continuing to the downside. So, yeah, if we're going to start losing this low here at not at one hundred and eleven dollars, and we're going to lose the support of the buy zone that I have for you here, which is at one hundred and ten point six dollars. We're already wicking below it, as you can see. If we're going to lose that, I would assume that the target is going to be carried out. So $95.6 is something that we could be expecting for Bitcoin Cash, especially with the FOMC meeting happening on September 21st. And I think on th on Thursday, we're going to get um, we're going to get the update regarding their decision if they're going to raise the uh, interest rates. And I do think we potentially could even pump, right? It all depends on what happens. We could see a little pump to the uh, to the upside, but I highly doubt that. I really think uh, I really think we're going to see another move to the downside. And I have been talking about these events for many, many weeks. So we talked about the CPI data coming out at the beginning of the month. We talked about Ethereum's merge and we talked about the FOMC meeting. Now, two out of those three events already dumped the markets and we're just waiting for the third one, right? And I really, really do think that we're going to see a move to the downside from uh, from after that, after the FOMC meeting. So moving over to the daily RSI, your major multi-month support trend line is going to be this white one here. 
Obviously, you have a little fake out here in June, but you went above that, back tested it as support once again, and then you were off to almost the overbought here. You are in some sort of a symmetrical triangle here as well on the daily RSI. We're breaking down from that. Obviously, the major resistance level for us at the moment is going to be this blue trend line here because we had one rejection in July, we had another rejection in September, and potentially we could reject from the yellow trend line here, and I would just be waiting for the white trend line to get a retest, right? Because we've done that multiple times. We've done that in January. We've done that in May. We've done that in June. And right now we're looking to do that and potentially in October and we're going to get a nice bullish move to the upside getting closer to November and maybe just maybe we may break above the blue trend line here. Now, if that happens, that's going to be a very bullish sign. I would wait for us to complete the impulsive move to the upside and I would take a look at the stochastic on the daily. And we're just going to see how overextended you're going to get on the R sign. If you manage to get to the overbought here, then that's a great time to take some profits. But if not, you're just going to have to be careful because usually after you break a multi-month diagonal trend line, resistance trend line, then you are going to see a strong impulsive move to the upside. And if you're going to be late on buying, then I would wait for a back test of support of that exact trend line for an entry. And from there, you can wait for the next impulsive move to the upside. So just keep an eye on this structure here. Uh, draw this out on your daily RSI. This is pretty important stuff here. A very, very important resistance level for us to break on the weekly or on the, I mean, on the daily chart. I do apologize. So now we can switch over to the Binance website. All right, switching over to the weekly. So straight off the bat, we can see that we're very overextended from the 20 EMA. And this can only mean one thing short to midterm is that we're going to get a back test of resistance here off of the 20 EMA, which is the yellow line. The 20 EMA is currently sitting at $157. From where we are right now, that is a 40% move to the upside. And hopefully we can get that retest. Also, keep in mind that the gap in between the EMAs is getting very, very large. And that usually means that we are very near the bottom. And especially if it's on the weekly chart, just like the gap in between the EMAs was pretty large over here. As you can see here, you had a very large gap before you started capitulating. So that was sort of your. Uh, that was your uh, call to action, basically. So if I just reverse the chart here, Alt I, if I hit Alt I, you can see that if you if this was an uptrend, you would say, or I would say that we're definitely going to see a back test, at least a back test of the 20 EMA, if not a back test of the 55, so that the EMAs could get closer together, and from there we could see another move to the upside. So, yeah, this is just really, really easy. Apply logic to this. If you're going to be going down for quite a while, at some point, you're going to see a move to the upside and it's just going to break the trend. So nothing goes down forever and nothing goes up forever. Just be aware of that and be ready for an impulsive move. Uh, I'm expecting it to be in November, just like we had bullish moves into November for the last two years. So the weekly stochastic is slowly starting to recover. We're in the midway point here, but expecting us to go to the overbought into November would be a good time to start taking some profits. My stochastic is set to the length of the RSI at 56. So keep that in mind. I want to get less false signals. That's why I have that set up uh, in such a way. For Bitcoin Cash on the weekly chart, as you can see, we do have a major resistance level here that we want to break. And if I just include, uh, let me just get another trend line here and show you this. There we go. So as you can see, you could say that this is some sort of a channel here that we were in. You had a little fake out here in June, but mainly you're holding this, this, this channel. And once you start breaking to the upside, that's going to be a very, very bullish sign, especially on the weekly chart. We've been holding this level as resistance since August of last year, guys. For a whole year, this has been a resistance. So look for the break of this trend line on the weekly chart. That's going to be one of the most bullish signals that you'll ever see. Also, if you're going to get the bullish cross on the weekly chart where the 20 MA crosses above the 55, that's going to be a very, very strong sign as well. So yeah, that basically you get the bearish cross. That's your um, bear market confirmation, you get the bullish cross or the bullish cross. That's your bull market confirmation. So thank you all for watching. If I missed out anything important on the charts, please let me know down below in the comment section. 
feel free to follow me on Twitter. Feel free to join my Patreon. I do drop in my low cap gems in there. You guys can request technical analysis and videos. Uh, I started a podcast series on there, a weekly podcast, and the latest episode is already out where I take a look at my portfolio for the first time on YouTube. And yeah, a whole bunch of stuff is in there. So check it out. Thank you all for watching. I'm going to catch you in the next one. Peace out.